Hey guys, Christian here. Welcome back to another video. This is part two of like a three part series this for the, the E46 day. M3. It is the same day, but I have to split the video so each part is not super long. This Anyways, is day one, 3 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, so on part one, we pretty much did maintenance, uh, maintenance for the E46 M3, subframe reinforcement, which I really needed. The subframe was looking so bad. Uh, if you guys haven't checked out part one, I do suggest you guys check that video out as well. If you have an E46, it's something you really wanna take care of before it's too late. Um, we also did uh, the diff bushings, there's three of them. Our tab bushings were already done in the car, so we don't have to do that. Today for part two, we're gonna focus on these coilovers that we're gonna to install to the E46 M3. Very, very nice. These are AST 5100s. If you know about this brand, you would know true enthusiasts that take their BMW to the track. Really, really like these coilovers. Of course, you can get AST coilovers that are suitable for street use as well. That's what I ended up going for. Ones that can be used for street use and the track. The 5100s offer 12 clicks of adjustability, ranging from a very soft ride to a very stiff one and everything in between, allowing you to really dial them into your liking. I'll even link to their website down in the description below. I highly recommend them. Uh, we'll do that today. Uh, get everything dialed in we got the adjustable end links and uh, we have these i believe these are like the front arm bushings and then for part three we're going to install the wheels which are all the way over there so guys this is actually christian from the future i know it's a little bit weird but i wanted to update you guys and tell you that we're only going to do two parts not three different part videos just because like the coal over install for the car is relatively simple and it just wouldn't make enough content for one video so i'll combine the coil overs install with the wheels install and yeah that's it and so yeah we're gonna install the camber arms Onto the E46 M3. The reason I got this is so I can get proper wheel fitment under rear. These chicken wings here, they do have some adjustment, but not much. Um, and I'm sure once we lower the car, the wheels are gonna sink in just a bit. And I want it to have like a very aggressive flush. You know, not no stance nation, but a flush uh, fitment. So you go like this, you know, and it goes like this. <laughs> what? what is this like chopsticks it looks like something you flip steak with on a barbecue grill yeah it's a barbecue edition let me see here oh yeah much more robust what brand is this pmc pmc Are those poly bushes bro oh my god oh my god so yeah with those camber arms i'm going to be able to get a precise fitment how i want it um once we lower the car that's exactly why i decided to get it i don't want the wheels to sink in i want it to have a flush look I'll show you oh, shit. i'm gonna hold something Are you maxing me out over there? Stance Nation, dog. I need some flush Stance Nation. I'm sure you guys are already familiar with this guy right here. He's been on my channel several times, the BMW Whisperer. And he likes to do things like this. Just wiggle stuff around. Oh, this is terrible. I'm sure my ride quality had something to do with this. Look how easily it's flaking. Look at this, it's just it's falling apart. So uh, Sean here from PSI was explaining to me earlier that they call this the divorce system because it's not a true coilover system. You have the shocks here and you have the springs that go individually and separately on the rear of the car. And of course we got some high quality brand new fresh bump stops. I freaking love the color scheme for these coilovers. Uh, reminds me a little bit of my channel, orange and black. These look freaking sick. Here's a better look at them. Yep. And then you got like the adjustability at the bottom. And of course, you know, we got to get the camber plate option as well. This side looks just as bad. What the hell is going on here? I guess this is what happens when your car sits outside for a year and a half unused. Look, it's just flaking off like it's nothing. Yeah, guys, so the bump stop on your struts are not supposed to look anything like this. I like that orange, though. Orange? Yeah, it's my favorite color. Did you know that? Orange. Not two syllables, one syllable. Orange. Dance nation, here I come. Nah, we don't. I, I don't. I don't mess with Stance Nation over here. I need a straight fitment. I don't do that fender to lip type stuff. It's not my style. That's right. Camber me out, baby. Stance Nation. Oh, you really are putting me Stance Nation. Yeah. I was just kidding. I don't want that. All right. So the rear strut with the rear spring that's already all bolted on on both the driver side and the passenger side. It is getting pretty late right now. Uh, we'll continue when I come back. I think Monday I'm coming back 
and then I'll continue part two. Yeah, this guy's the king of stands. By the way, we're back at PSI. Uh, got really late last night, so we're finishing up here. Uh, Ali's currently dialing in the suspension. Then we're gonna go ahead and take the wheels and fit them on to the car. Yeah, we slept right here. See if we can dial it in. Well, that's where you slept at. I slept, uh, you see that, that bath, that oil bath area? That's where I slept at. Anyways, while Ali takes care of this, I'll show you guys what the wheels look like. I think you guys are really gonna like them. These are fully forged Titan 7TR10 wheels finished in this very unique satin titanium color. The specs on the wheels are 18 by 9.5 with a plus 22 offset up front and 19 by 10.5 with a plus 25 offset in the rear. As far as the tires, I decided to go with the well respected Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires 245 40 for the front and 275 35 for the rear. The cost for the wheels are $2,100, which is quite the bargain for track focused fully forged wheels. They're mounted using PS. PSI Orlando's tire mounted machine that really does a good job at protecting the wheels during installation since the parts that touch the wheels are made out of plastic. If you guys need some suspension work done, get your wheels fitted onto the car properly. Come see these guys at PSI Orlando, be able to hook it up. Oh, them active auto work headers though. They look like shit. <laughs> they, they sure do. Ta-da! Installed, okay, go drive it. One syllable, remember. Orange. No, not two, orange. Orange. That's how you say it. Orange. 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 You from New York? Orange. Close enough, I'm from Rhode Island. Orange. Thumbnail. Orange. <laughs> Looking at the AST 5100s, you'll notice that the adjustability is at the bottom, which is right here. You got 12 clicks of adjustability um, for the damning and the rebound. Uh, unlike traditional systems where you have that adjustment right here. This one has, has it at the bottom because of the specific design It's a inverted strut design and I guess um, the concept behind that is it copes with heavy Side loading that you would get here and uh, heavy brake loading pretty freaking sweet If you guys do end up getting a set of AST colors Make sure to to get the optional camber plates because that's gonna allow you to get the fitment perfect at the front Definitely very good to have especially if you're gonna go with more aggressive wheels in the future or if you're trying to do something different Or if you're trying to be a hot boy or if you're trying to be a hot boy That's it Oh yeah! You did lower them already? Yes. Is it slammed to the ground? That's max low. Max low? That's what I like to hear. Is it time to fit the wheels? Don't worry, baby. We'll get you right on the car very soon. All right, so the last thing to do is to replace the front arm bushings right here. Once we do that, then we can go ahead and test fit and get the right fitment on the car. Ali went ahead and removed the bushings for the front control arm. Um, we're gonna go ahead and replace them with the Rogue Engineering ones. And after that, we can go ahead and test fit the wheels. I cannot wait for that moment. These front control arm bushings are engineered and designed by Rogue and are quite the step up from traditional OEM rubber bushings. The aluminum housing essentially becomes an extension to the arm allowing for far less bushing deflection under load while at the same time controlling the amount of NVH thanks to the urethane insert. Rogue Engineering offers two different bushing inserts, one that's for the track and this one here that can be used for both scenarios. So here is the condition of the front control arm bushing. Condition, I guess. I mean, it looks pretty bad. It's definitely cracking on the outside. So uh, these were due to be changed for sure. So we're trying to de-virginize this poly bushing. Maybe it's supposed to be squeezed on there with force. Did you add the Vaseline? Give me. Oh, I see. You're adding some lube. That's the way it's supposed to go, man. Can't torture that bushing. Giggity. You know what's weird? I ordered the center caps for the Titan 7 wheels, but I can't seem to locate where I put them at. Um, typically when you buy these wheels, they don't come with center caps because these are designed for the track. You know, you need the track look without the center caps. Um, I did buy them for these wheels, just can't find them at the moment. Um, that said, I'm sure I'll find them before. Um, I dial in the fitment and show you guys the final results. Sick rust, dude. Yeah, that's why I need those center caps. <laughs> that's in the middle. That looks disgusting. 
Like I said, I did get the center caps. I just can't locate them at the moment. This color is very interesting. It's like a gunmetal with like a hint of blue. Very unique. Never really seen this on other wheels. I really did like it. I was able to get this these wheels in like a matte black color or like satin black. But um, since I have pretty much black on black, I figured that these wheels are going to pop out more so I can really see the design and appreciate them. <laughs> that is completely slammed up. Holy crap, completely. Uh, yeah, that's pretty ideal. Yes, let's do it. The ideal fitment would be a hybrid between the front and the back, somewhere in the middle. Let me know in the comments section below what do you guys prefer with fitment? Wheel tuck exposed uh, sidewall, off-road F-150 style. <laughs> I'll be back tomorrow here at PSI uh, and then continue getting uh, the settings dialed in for the suspension and get the fitment right. I uh, will also put the car on the alignment rack because <laughs> that's very important. I don't need to be doing the Holland shake on the highway. But uh, yeah, I'll be back tomorrow. I got to do some stuff today. And uh, yeah, see you guys then. Check it out, boys. Look what we found. The center caps for the wheels. Oh yes. <laughs> Once the E46 M3 gets aligned, I'll go ahead and pop these in and show you guys what they look like. I gotta say, these are some high quality center caps. At least compared to anything I've ever owned in the past. Pretty cool. At this point everything was installed and the car was aligned, but it didn't mean that this was the finished product. If you've ever done wheels and suspension, you'll know that it takes trial and error process. I knew what changes needed to be made so I decided to leave the M3 at PSI and have them work their magic. So it's been a few days, the E46 M3 is back home, the fitment is dialed in, the suspension is sitting perfect and the wheels are looking gorgeous. Let me show you guys the final results. I don't mind me guys, if the footage is a little bit shaky, it's because I'm rocking an umbrella. I wanna finish this video, but the rain does not stop. So here's the fitment on the rear wheel right here. As you can see, it's nearly flush. I believe the camber adjustment here is negative 2.5. Um, you can barely tell, but there's a slight camber to it. I couldn't really go any more flush or I would eat up the fender back there. And I don't think it's that easy to roll the fenders here on the E46 M3. But yeah, that's the fitment on the rear. I'm very, very happy with that. Look at the back, yep, very, very aggressive. Here's the rear from a different angle right here so you guys can see. Yeah, nice and flush, looks really good. Now if you look at the front, as you can tell, it's a pretty tight fit up here as well, but there was more camber that needed to be adjusted up front. I believe we're sitting at negative 3.5 in the front, which I guess is pretty good for handling because a lot of people that take their E46 M3 to the track they typically run negative 4, negative 4.5, but this is more of a daily than a track car. Of course, I'll go to the track, but occasionally. So I'm looking to maybe straighten up the wheels a little bit in the front, if possible. If there's not going to be an interference with the top, as you can see, it's a very tight squeeze. And plus, you want to have a little bit of clearance there, so when you're making turns and stuff, or you'll eat up your entire fender. This is what it looks like in the front. As you can see, there's slightly more camber in the front. Uh, like an extra negative degree uh, it's not too bad but definitely not what i want i want to go for at least negative two or negative 2.5 but yeah here's another look and here's a look from this angle right here the side of the car and if you want to see the front and rear wheels at an angle here it is pretty good this m3 seriously looks like a track car now the fitment is precise 
Um, it does have the meaty tire setup, which I'm new to. I typically go bigger wheels and skinnier tires, but I wanted to have more comfort. And I wanted to give it that aggressive track look. And I think it looks really good. Here's what the gap looks like in the back. That's it. That's as much fingers I could put in there. It's a very, very tight squeeze. I did drive the car about 20 miles and I have no rubbing issues in the back at all. So this is like as close as it's gonna get before I start rubbing. This is really close, but just enough. That's what I call good fitment, man. The guys at PSI did a really good job. And this is what the front gap looks like. Obviously, there's a lot more room here because of more camber. You kind of need some of that room to turn effectively. Um, It'll be very interesting to see how much I can straighten out this wheel before this becomes an issue. But yeah, that's a lot more room right here, but it's it's a given. It's the front tires. Ooh, that looks very, very nice. Well, with the exception of the rust that we have in the brake disc because it's raining at the moment, but we get that cleaned up. I wanted to show you guys how much room we have to play when it's fully turned. Uh, when it's turned towards the inside of the car, it uh, doesn't seem like much of an issue. But let me show you on the passenger side what the clearance looks like. There's like no play. My finger does not fit in there at all. So the last thing that I need is that I'm trying to make a U-turn or a sharp turn and the suspension travels just enough where it hits the fender and I lose the fender. So this is very close. I gotta be very careful when I do turns. Um, and this is what my worry is. When I straighten out the wheels a little bit, it's gonna be a more tight squeeze. So it's hard to tell if I'm gonna be able to do that or not. But yeah, either I stiffen up the suspension because you do have the adjustments on the coilover to make it really stiff. Not a lot of suspension travel. You won't have to worry about the, the fender. But if I want to make the ride more comfortable with the settings towards like the soft, then this might be an issue. I got a lot of plans for the E46 M3, guys. I'm very excited about this build. I have a lot of parts on the way that I have to install on this car. This car is getting a vinyl wrap um within a month's time and then i might even get the csl trunk because i'm a big fan of the integrated lip that's on the trunk um i got a custom steering wheel for the inside i'm going to be doing some things with the trim maybe even the seats it's going to be a very exciting build you guys do not want to miss out on it make sure to subscribe also make sure to follow me on instagram because i'll be doing a few polls on there to ask you guys opinions on certain um modifications i'm going to do in the car as always guys thanks for watching till next time